Hey guys, welcome to another episode of 180 Briefs. I am so glad you could join us this beautiful weekend. Hopefully you got to uh, see some family or at least talk to them and connect with them. Uh, today we have um, grandma and grandpa over and the cousins over and it's been nice. We're doing a small Christmas celebration before we go out of town for vacation. I'm going to drive to Colorado to see Heather's brother and sister-in-law and their little munchkin, Maddie. So, um, welcome to 180. Uh, today's guest speaker is our awesome pastor, Elizabeth McDonald. And I hope you enjoy that. So, have you started celebrating yet? Have you been having fun yet? Have you opened any gifts yet? Do you have a favorite yet, or is it still too early? I mean, Christmas isn't until later in the week, but some of us have already started celebrating. A lot of people are like, you know, we're starting things early because we need some joy and happiness around here. Have you walked around the neighborhood to see the Christmas lights at night? We're uh, probably within the next hour, we're going to go get everybody and go for a nice long walk around the subdivision and look at some lights. So... Years ago, uh, for Christmas, I got something that I didn't think I would ever get Heather. And I honestly don't remember if it's something that she kind of wanted or if it was something that she was complaining about something that she had and said she would like a newer version. And I actually remembered and I went to a store and found it. And it's this thing right here. It's one of those neck pillow type things that are filled with beads. You throw it in the microwave for a couple minutes. And you put it around your neck. And you just relax. And over the years, she's had some. And they're the kind that when you microwave them, they smell awful. But this one has like lavender in it. So it smells pretty very relaxing and to this day and I think I've got this like three years ago maybe to this day she says this is probably her favorite gift that I ever got her because she uses it all the time in fact this has seen better days it's starting to wear out where when you throw it in the microwave it just isn't getting heat so you have to crank it up even more to get it hot but she loves it and it's one of those gifts that you don't think you need, but once you get it, you love it to death. And have you ever had any gifts like that that you didn't think you needed and someone bought it for you and you you looked at it and you're like, huh. But then you started using it and you use it all the time and you love it. If you do, I want you to put down in the comments what it was. I also would love anyone who watches the video, just put your name. I just want to see who's actually watching uh, because I don't have the fancier version of YouTube that spells out who exactly is watching. And I'd love to know who is watching, just curiosity. So shoot a little thing down below in the comments. And also when this is over, click the like button or the share button or the subscribe button or click on the other videos wherever they are in the screen when you watch it <laughs> but what was the gift that you received that you didn't know that you couldn't live without and you know where i'm going with this for many of us and don't realize it but it's the gift of christ that we receive didn't know we could live without it. I mean, for a lot of us that that weren't born into Christianity and, you know, just had things going in their lives, and then once they found Christ and accepted Christ and his gift and was set free from all the garbage in their lives, and, you know, being a Christian it isn't easy. You know, it's just that we have someone who's going to help carry us through all of our problems. And it's just one of those gifts, you know, that you're given, didn't think you needed, 
but once you have it, you're so appreciative of having that gift. So if you're watching and you don't know them and you don't realize you have a gift sitting under the tree for you, I just encourage you to grab that gift and rip it open and accept it. And if you need help understanding and unpacking that more, go ahead and uh, send us an email at the end of the video. You'll see the, the prayer email, the 180hsdac at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. We'd love to pray for you. We'd love to talk to you. Um, if you want to talk to a, one of the pastors, I'll get you connected. Just let me know. So anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. Love to see you on here. Can't wait to see your faces. Can't wait to do it without masks. And just as we get closer to Christmas, just pray that you are able to hunt down family and friends as much as you can, uh, whether it's just on, you know, through video. Uh, right now, I know my niece is talking to grandpa from, you know, while she's in Colorado and she calls grandma and grandpa every day and, you know, does FaceTime. Try doing that. I know so many, so much of, so many of us are so sick of doing videos and being on Zoom meetings for work or school, but it's the only way we're connecting right now. So, do that. Find someone, encourage them. If it's possible, give someone a hug. So, anyway, love you guys. So glad that you can join us. Hope you have a great week and uh, stay tuned for Pastor Elizabeth. Love you all. Bye. Hello, Hensdale Church family. This is Pastor Elizabeth here. And before we begin diving into our study today, I just want to reach out to you virtually and tell you that your Hensdale Church family and staff are praying and thinking of you. We know that the holiday season can have a little bit of a hustle and bustle and kind of sorrow to some sometimes. And so we just want you to know that we are thinking and that we are praying for each of you and that if you need anything at all, that we're just a phone call away. We hope that you are able to have some warmth and love in your heart this season, in addition to bringing some joyful noise to your house as well. So please know that if you need anything at all, that we're just a phone call, a Zoom call, or a text away. Today, we are going to be taking a look at a little story in the Bible that I read every time during the Christmas season. You may think that it's a little odd and not very festive, but to me, it's something quite beautiful. So I can't wait to share with you that tradition that I have today. Before we dive too far into things, why don't you join me in a word of prayer as we begin? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you so much for being a God who is with us, uh, even though we're so far apart from so many people. Lord, I ask that you bless this service today, that you may open our hearts and our minds to better understand what you may be asking for us, and that you clear our hearts and our minds of anything that may be distracting to us today. Thank you so much for all that you do, whether wherever we may be, we know that you are with us always. In your name, amen. Today, we are going to be talking about a story in the Bible, like I shared, that I have read almost every Christmas season for the last few years. It's become somewhat of a tradition to me uh, because of the beautiful meaning and story behind it. So today, before we begin, before we dive right into scripture and talk about this story, I want you to think of a noise that brings some type of familiarity to you, whether that be your parents maybe cooking in the kitchen um, as you grew up, maybe the sizzle on the frying pan, you can just smell whatever's cooking and bringing back those memories. Maybe it's your sister like mine uh, in her room with her Walkman, yes. I know what a Walkman is, Steve, um, but maybe it's your my sister uh, that's dancing and singing way off key in her bedroom. 
or maybe it's just the fire crackling in the fireplace. I want you to think of that familiar sound that brings back so many different memories. And I want you to comment it in down in the comments below so I can take a look and see what familiar sounds are in your memories. I bring this all up because this season of the year, the holiday season, always seems to come with noise. For example, my family is definitely a family that is loud and that is always yelling to one another <laughs> um, that if you walked into our family on Thanksgiving and Christmas, you would be a little bit taken back. Uh, in fact, during college, I went to a friend's house for Thanksgiving and I one of the first things I th said to them after Thanksgiving dinner is I said, your family is so quiet. I just, my family would never be this quiet. <laughs> um, we're always yelling and not in a bad way, but we're are just so loud. And so um, during the holiday season, it can be really noisy, not only in our homes, not only in our, our families, um, but it can be really noisy within our minds of thinking of all the different things that we have to do. We have to get presents, we have to bake home goods, we have to uh, schedule our, our, our calendars for all the parties that have happening. Um, of course, this year is a little bit different, but when it comes to the holiday season, it seems like there's always something really noisy happening around us. And how often do we get the chance to really kind of sit back and cherish in the silence that is around us during the season, which I think the silence is the beautiful thing about what makes Christmas so special. We're going to be touching on that in a little bit, but I'm going to read you a story and I want us to talk about a story today that I've read for the last few years years around the Christmas season. And I know that it's a story that definitely does not correlate with the birth of Christ at all. Um, however, I read this story because it really refocuses me on those moments in life where I take a step back from the chaos, I take a step back from the noise around me, and I focus on the small, still silent moments that God is opening in my life. So in order to read this story together, I'm going to invite you to open up your Bibles or grab your electronic devices as we read together the story of Elijah in 1st Kings 19. 1st Kings 19. Now I again I know that this is not a story that's related to the Christmas story at all but I want you to hold in there with me as I tie this together um, towards the end. But I want to read together this story. Again the story is something that I read every holiday season um, and I think has a beautiful meaning after we kind of tie everything together in a perfect Christmas bow. So 1 Kings 19, and this is the story of Elijah. And Elijah is literally running for his life right now. He is escaping um, from Jezebel and like people are literally wanting to kill him. And so he is literally running for dear life at this moment. And in verse four, it says, but he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness. And he came and sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die. And he said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I'm no longer better than my father's. Verse five says, but then he laid there and slept under the broom tree and suddenly an angel touched him and he said to him, arise and eat. Then in verse six, it says that he looked and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he sat there and ate and drank and laid down again. And in verse seven, it says, but the angel of the Lord came back to him for a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat because this journey is too great for you. In verse eight, it says, so he also arose and drank and he went and got his strength. And from that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights to the mountain of God. In verse nine, it says, then he went there to a cave and spent the night at that place. Now, this story is really kind of a weird story to think about. 
Elijah is literally running for his life and he travels a whole day and he's in the middle of nowhere and he lies down and he says, God, I am so tired of running. I'm emotionally and physically tired of running. I just want you to end my life now. There's so much going on. I know that they're eventually going to catch up to me. I know that they're eventually going to kill me. Lord, just take me now kill me. I'm just so, so, so tired. And he travels and he just, he's so, so exhausted. And in verse nine, in verse five, it says that he sleeps so long that an angel of the Lord comes to him and he wakes him up and he feeds him and he hydrates him. And I think that this is such a beautiful picture of what's happening here. This person who is running and running and running and he's so mentally and physically exhausted that the angel of the Lord comes to him, wakes him up and makes sure and makes sure that he is nourished. And I bring this thing, bring this story up because I think so often in the Christmas season, we're running, we're running, we're running. We're maybe physically exhausted. Maybe we're a little anxious. Maybe we're a little depressed. But, and yet that we see that back then the angel of the Lord came to him in his exhaustion, in his anxiety, in his weariness, and he fed him and he comforted him and he prepared him for the journey ahead. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper as we go down to verse uh, 10. It says, he said to him, I have been very zealous of the Lord God of hosts for the children of Israel has forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars and killed your prophets with a sword. And I am alone and they yet to still take my life. Verse 11 says, then he said, go out and stand on the mountains before the Lord and behold, the Lord passed by. Now here Elijah is, he's ran from uh, all these people. He's traveled 40 days and 40 nights, probably 41 because that one day uh, going in the wilderness and he's gone to this cave. And at this point, the Lord is telling him to go out on this cave and to see the Lord's presence. Now, I'm a very visual person. So um, at this point, I picture, I don't know if you guys seen the Grinch uh, movie with uh, Jim Carrey, where like the Grinch goes out and he's on this huge mountain and he's overlooking all of the city. And I kind of picture that type of moment where Elijah is on this mountain and he's like on this cliff and He's probably just has so many emotions and so many thoughts going on. And though he's waiting for the Lord's presence to come to him. And then verse 11, it says, he goes out there and stands on this mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces. I mean, he's standing on this mountain and all of a sudden there's this big wind and the wind is so strong that it starts crumbling the rocks and the rocks start falling. But it says that the Lord was not in the rocks. And it, the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire either. And after the fire, there was a still small voice. And this is where we find the Lord's presence in this story. That out of all of these great and magical and beautiful things that happen where, you know, we expect that the Lord's greatness to be in the fire. We expect the Lord's greatness to be in the wind that rocks the mountains. We expect God's greatness to be in the earthquake that shakes the earth and the world. And yet God's presence is not in any of these ground breaking profound things. We find that the Lord's greatness is in the simple, still, small voice that passes through these mountains. Now, again, I bring this all up around the holiday season uh, for a couple of reasons, some of which I, I've already mentioned. But I think that during the holiday season, we are running so much. We're worried about so many different things. We have so many emotions going on within our hearts and our minds that we just forget that God is not in these big parties. Um, God is not centered around and focused on these grand, extravagant, 
in, things that we do. God is wanting us to focus on these still small moments and where we have in our life. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing. Now, this comparison that I think of here in the Old Testament compared to the New Testament is quite beautiful. And you may not think this is beautiful, but I do. And this is why I read this story every year, is that when Jesus was born, he was born in a time where it was very loud and chaotic. So much was going on. I mean, we have Herod over here saying that, you know, he's heard that there is a baby born and that he's the savior of the world and Herod wants to kill him. I mean, we have Mary and Joseph literally traveling to Bethlehem because they have to go back for the census. I mean, I'm sure that was not in Mary's, you know, pregnancy birth plan traveling all of this way and then when she travels there she's not placed in this peaceful and beautiful and silent um bed and breakfast she's placed in this barn with cows and kettle and them eating and and all of this mess and noise around this and yet in the messiness and in the noisiest places there's this beautiful thing that happens and that's Jesus being born. And I picture if Jesus's birth was a movie in, in some type of movie that we were watching, I would imagine that this time Jesus's birth would be that scene in the movie where everyone's at a party and it's super loud and super noisy and chaotic. And then all of a sudden Jesus is born and the room becomes quiet. And I, I don't know if this is making sense. These are just my thoughts. But this there's something so beautiful about knowing that Jesus was born in the most noisiest of moments. And yet, and yet I think the world just went silent at that moment. And so the reason why I compare these two stories and I read them during the holiday season is that in first, in first Kings 19, it says that God was not in the earthquake, not in the rocks, not in the, in the winds or anything like that. God was in the still small voice. And here in the New Testament, in the birth of Jesus, we see that Jesus was not born or, or comes in this great, magnificent, beautiful thing, but in the still smallness of an innocent child. And I think that these comparisons that God is coming to us, not in these noisy moments, but in these moments that we cherish together, these quiet, beautiful moments. When I was a child, one of my favorite songs was Silent Night. Um, it kind of became one of our family's favorite songs as well. And the reason why we loved this song so much is because in first and second grade, my teacher would always have this tradition to teach his class Silent Night in sign language. And it was something that everyone cherished at the Christmas concert at our school. We would anticipate everyone um, waiting for the first and second graders to go up there and say, silent night, holy night, all is calm or calm, all is bright. Clearly I haven't done it in a while, but we would all learn silent night in sign language. And Nobody would be talking. It would be such a quiet room. And in the background, you would hear Silent Night playing and all these 25 kids up on stage signing this song. And it wasn't until quite a few years ago that I looked up the story behind Silent Night. And it's quite beautiful. I think it's it's pretty funny now as a pastor. But it's this pastor who, um, it's Christmas Eve service and their organ doesn't work. And so everyone's expecting to come to the church to sing Christmas hymns, to be in the Christmas spirit, to leave filled with the Christmas joy. And here the organ doesn't work. And so this guy, he gets this poem that he wrote a few years ago and he starts uh, handing it out to the musician there. And the musician says, man, this is pretty good. You know, this is a good poem. I'm going to put this poem to music. And so that's exactly what he does. And he takes that music and he puts it into a poem that they then sing at the Christmas program that night. 
And at that night, they sing the song that we now know of Silent Night. And I want to just read to you the lyrics of Silent Night because I think that they're so beautifully written. And especially knowing that the history uh, of this song, this song is literally created in a moment where there's so much chaos around us. There's the organ that's not working. There's the pressure of the church of people coming at that time. There's all this chaos around them. And yet this song was built for this moment in where people could remember the Christmas season and have this peace about them. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round young virgin, Mary and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. I share all of this to say that if you're feeling the noise of the holiday season, if you're feeling the chaos and the anxiety of everything that goes on during the holiday season, I really encourage you to take some time, take some silence and enjoy God's beauty within that silence, to enjoy this, this quietness of the holiday season, the birth of Jesus coming in, in the most precious and small way the way that he has come into the world. Silent night, holy night, all is come, all is bright. I hope that you and your family have a wonderful holiday season this year, and I hope to see you in person or virtually next time.